Hi there, and welcome to the Cotswold Explorer. I'm Robin Shuckborough, and we're exploring the wonderful region of the Cotswolds in southwest England. For the last couple of years, we've been following in the footsteps of Herbert Evans, who wrote this wonderful book, Highways and Byways in Oxford and the Cotswolds, in 1905. But we've almost finished his journey now, so we've decided to revisit the centre of the region and find some hidden gems, places that are not quite so famous, but still just as beautiful. And here we are in the village of Broadwell, which is just a couple of miles from Stowe on the Wold and is one of the many comparatively undiscovered beauty spots of the Cotswolds. Broadwell has it all. A broad village green ringed by lovely Cotswold stone cottages, a gentle stream running through the village, a popular inn behind me, and a Norman church full of interesting monuments and artefacts, which take me straight back to my early teens. The church is closed today for reasons only too obvious in view of the fact that we're here at the beginning of 2021. But it was one of the many little churches I explored with my brother in the late 1950s and early 1960s. I remember climbing the tower steps to the roof something you're certainly not allowed to do these days, and surveying the incredible view from up there. It's amazing how little has changed. As you can see, we have arrived on a spring day when the flowers are simply spectacular. St Paul's Church dates in part to the 12th century, but was added to and altered over the years, not least in the 19th century. During the later Middle Ages, the manor belonged to the Benedictines, who were extremely powerful in this part of the world. Broadwell is mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. At that time, it had only 46 inhabitants. In 2011, there were 355, and the population was slightly declining Soon we'll discover exactly how many live here now, as this is a census year in the UK. This huge village green was donated to the village by Lord Ashton quite recently in the late 20th century. And down beside the green runs a classic Cotswold shallow stream, a tributary of the Evenlode the road fords the stream, which is no more than a few inches deep, in a way that's quite familiar in these parts. The Fox Inn, a pretty classic country pub, has the slightly less familiar privilege of being able to serve beer made in the nearby village of Donington, which is where we are headed next. Donnington, a hamlet in the parish of Stowe on the Wold, a mile and a half north of Stowe, is divided in two by the A424. The hamlet is tiny and entirely residential, except for the wonderful brewery. But during the Civil War, the Royalists under Lord Aston were defeated here in 1645 by the parliamentarian Colonel Morgan. This defeat was closely instrumental in the subsequent surrender of the King's garrison at Oxford. On the western side of the main road is the 19th century Donnington Mill and adjoining brewery. Both are built of the local oolite stone and stone slate tiles. The two-storey Four Bay Brewery is rectangular in plan and Arkell's Donnington Brewery was established on this site in 1865. Until as recently as 1959, all power for the brewery was supplied by the two great water wheels. They're still used occasionally. 
This beautiful lake is home to a bevy of swans, a few of which are black. I've always thought black swans to be the most elegant of birds, and they've been used for many years as the logo for this wonderful brewery. Ross and I bought bottles of each of their range, and frankly, we had an extremely happy afternoon. We'll see you soon with more lesser-known gems from this area around Stow on the World. So subscribe to the channel and we'll keep you informed. See you soon.